Well, hello everyone. This is Al Fadi, and I want to welcome you back to yet another objection that we are going to tackle in this series that we have called uh, the Qibla Dilemma. Of course, if you've been watching these videos that we have released, uh, released so far from this particular series, you've noticed that our brother Dan Gibson is with us here virtually, and he's the one who's really handling the response to these particular objections that are being raised against his data and against his own publications. Today, we are going to deal with yet another objection that has to do with Petra. Last time we talked about Petra, was Petra a ruined city? during the time of Muhammad, or was it actually a functioning city? And I think we proved without a shadow of a doubt from archaeological findings that it was a functioning, vibrant city based on the records that were discovered. Now we're going to talk about another objection against Petra, the fact that the claim, at least, that Petra was not mentioned in Islamic sources, was not mentioned in the Quran. So, to respond to this claim, we turn our attention again to our brother, Dan Gibson. Dan, what say you about Petra being referenced in Islamic sources, and in particular, the Quran? It's interesting, Al Fadi, because that was first uh, objection was raised by Dr. King in one of his many objections that he had and said, well, last time I checked, he said, I checked that uh, Petra didn't appear in the uh, Encyclopedia of Islam. And he's right, it, it, the name of Petra wasn't there. Part of that is because we are so used to calling Petra Petra that uh, we, we don't realize that maybe it had another name. That'd be like if I was talking to an American about the Big Apple and somebody somewhere else in the world like, what are you talking about? And wouldn't know that the reference was to New York. So uh, did Petra have other names? Did it have other titles? Was it known in other ways? And so we need to dig that information out because, yes, the word Petra doesn't appear in the Quran and it doesn't appear in any of the histories or the Hadith. So what other names can we find? And, and was it the same or is, is it simply missing? So the first thing we need to recognize is what were the names of these mountains? Where Petra was, it has a history. My advantage here is I grew up as a Christian. I grew up uh, reading the Bible. I had a father who did a lot of research uh, looking at all the biblical history. He loved the Old Testament and, and uh, he loved archaeology and especially Egyptian uh, history and so forth. So I began to rec realize very early on in my life that the area around the uh, the southern Jordan there were known as the people that were called the, Sh the Shasu. And so uh, they they lived there. And Ammon Heptep III, in his Egyptian records, he writes about he had a battle with Seir in the land of the Shasu. And so uh, these, this is the name of the area. These are the mountains of Seir. And the Bible explains to us that Mount Seir was named after Seir the Horite, who was from the tribe of the Horites. And so uh, and he was the ruler of these mountains, a very mountainous area, very good place to get in and do it. It would be hard for people to get you out of there. So uh, we can look for the name Seir. And so we read, if we continue reading in the Bible, that Esau uh, was uh, took over this area and he lived in Mount Seir and he battled against the Horites and he then became the, uh, the ruler as it were. And so the uh, Esau and his descendants who were known as Edomites, all lived in Mount Seir. It's so known as have... Sa'ir. That's the Arabic word for it, Sa'ir. Sa'ir. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. It's interesting if you read in Deuteronomy and several other places in the Bible that when Esau uh, battled the Horites, he also battled against the Zamzumites. Okay. Now, that's an interesting <laughs> name. Zamzumites. Zamzum. Okay, fine. We're going to talk about that in the future. <laughs> right. So let's just remember that this is the home of the people who their tribal name has ZMZM -Z in it. Zamzam, the Zamzamites. What a coincidence. What a coincidence. Yeah. 
what a coincidence, in Mount Seir. And so Mount Seir is also, we're told, many years later, the uh, the Israelites are fighting with the Amalekites, and they're destroying them. They are annihilating them, and uh, the last remnant of the Amalekites flee south across over into Mount Seir, and there they hole up in the mountains. And so um, the, the Jewish people have to go down and fight the Amalekites in Mount Seir. What's interesting there is because later we will find that the Quran and the other histories make mention that the Amalekites used to live in Mount in Mecca. Mm. Okay, so Mecca is associated with the Amalekites, and and Muslim scholars argue and talk about this because the Amalekites are from way up north. That's right. Okay, they never got way down to Mecca and Saudi Arabia, but we have association here with Zemzemites, with the Amalekites, with Esau living there, and with Jewish people, and then later the Nabataeans. So all of these are little hooks that we have for this area around Petra, and when we look at that, those hooks all are associated in some way with regular Islamic history, but we're not making the claim based on those. It's, those are just coincidences that help build our case later on uh, as we go through all these other arguments. Another name is the name El-Rakim. El-Rakim right. is the name of a king who lived in, in Mount Seir at one time. And uh, we have, uh, there's some papers that have been published that we can put out there the name of them afterwards. And this, uh, there's a funerary inscription. Uh, there's inscriptions in Petra mentioning Rakim. There's rabbinic writings that call Petra Rakim. There's uh, a letter attributed to Cyril of uh, Jerusalem uh, who calls it Rakim. Some Syriac texts who call it Rakim. There's a homily of Eusebius of Caesarea. He calls it Rakim. The Book of Laws and Countries countries by uh, Bar Sedun. He calls it Rakim. The writings of Josephus call it uh, Rakim. And also some biblical texts mention the whole area as Rakim. So there's a very strong case that this city at one time in pre-Islamic times was known as El Rakim. Uh, so that is a name that's attached there. And that is a name we can find even in the Quran. So uh, we, would right. have to, we can yeah. look at those links. Right. Um, other things that are there in the in the language of Pet, uh, of Hebrew, which was the the original language of the Jews as they wrote, they called it the whole name of the place Sila. Now Sila simply meant rock, mm -hmm. the place of the rock, and so because it's a great rock that has split in two and created a valley down the side and split in other ways, there's all kinds of cracks there and everything, and so it, it was known as Sila. Now, we're going to get into this because there ends up to be two Silas, and we need to get that clear. But also in the Greek language, the translation of Sila or rock is Petra, which means rock. And as far back as Pliny the Elder, we have um, Petra, which means rock. And uh, he says that Pliny the Elder says the capital of the Nabataeans, the center of their trade route is, is Petra, this great rock. Now, there is a second place called Petra, and it is also a great rock. And it is north of Petra, closer to the Edomite capital of uh, uh, Bushira, and, uh, but the, the Hebrews called it Sila. So don't could be confused, two Silas, two Petras, depending if you're talking in Hebrew or in Greek. And so you have these two Petras. This is why the Romans called the province of Petria. Petria right. is the plural right. of it. So uh, if you're calling it one rock, uh, so if you're using Hajar as a rock, Hajar in Arabic, Hajartain would make it two. So uh, Petria makes it two. So, so we have this this name, and we can understand now why it's called uh, Arabia Petria, Arabia of the two Petras. Okay, so the Romans also gave the name the city other names. So it's not like Petra was the main name. It was really officially called Imperial Colony Antonia. Now the word colony is meant different back then than now. It meant that it was a major settlement that developed smaller settlements out of it. Mm -hmm. So it, the whole word is reversed now to mean the smaller settlements when you're a colony. Back then it was 
the one who created the colonies. And so that was the name of the city. In the third century, it was officially given a name in Greek, and it was called the mother of colonies, the one who starts it. It is the one who begins colonies. And in Arabic, the translation of mother of colonies is Um Kura, mm. the mother of colonies. Um and the Quran calls it Um Kura, um and it tells us that is the city right. of Muhammad. That's right. That's right. And so we have this name, Um Kura, uh, is Arabic, and the mother of colonies, I'm saying in English, and there is it is also there in uh, in Greek, and that is the name. So um, the mother of colonies is started. Now, it was also called, as you reread through the Petra Scrolls, there's lots of legal documents, so it helps us to get legal names. It is called the Blessed City. And that word is used at that time. It had several meanings. Uh, it also could mean the noble city. It could mean the holy city. It was a place of lots of religions. I find it very interesting that when I come to the Arabic language and to, to Arab people and Arab history, it is uh, it's often known as... Is as Mecca the the noble and Mecca as the the holy place and Mecca as the um, the al- blessed city. Yeah, al Balad al Amin. Balad al Amin. Um, you have um, there's more than that. Mukarrama, maybe uh, I'll have to go back. Mukarrama, صح. Yep, yep. Uh, things like that. Yep. Um, the, 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 these were common names that were used for Petra at that time, when they were writing, they would just say, in the blessed city, is the way they would describe it. Just the way in Islam, they would talk about in the blessed city. And so uh, I find many parallels with that. And the last one is one that, that that will probably take some discussion over time. We'll probably come back to it if people want to discuss this. But um, there was a man named Thomas Arts Rooney. He was uh, writing farther north. And he's writing at the very same time that Al-Tabari is writing the histories of Islam. And he's writing the history of his people, the Armenians. And he talks about a place called Mecca. And this is what he says. At that time, in a place in Arabia, called Arabia Petria, named, the place was named Mecca, the Mecca, he says. He showed himself to his brothers, and then he goes on to describe this new leader who arises, who, uh, and, and uh, whose name is Muhammad. Right. So he places Muhammad in Arabia Petria, and, uh, and he names the town that he's in as Mecca. Right. Now, what do you do with that? Okay, so you know, and uh, at this point, we know that in southern Jordan there is Arabia Petria. We know the area. We know there the towns were there. And I have a whole video series that goes and looks through this uh, and uh, and just uh, works through some of this. But I, the way I interpret this is, I think in time there were two meccas. Just as if you come to Canada, you can find, and in America, you can find lots of names that were borrowed from the countries where the people came from. And so they came up. So even you, uh, there is New York, but there is York in England. That's right. And so people came over and, and they, the names follow. And so many times place names follow. They just go to a new place and they give it the name of where they came from because right. they're starting That's something right. new. That's right. And uh, even in many Islam, uh, in the cities, I was in Jordan, the, the names, the areas of the cities, uh, for a while there, we visited people in, in Ma'ania, but they were the original settlers there were from the city. City of Ma'an, and so mm. the, the the names followed through where those people That's live. Right. So, what I, it seems to me that when the people first arrived down in Saudi Arabia with that black stone and put it there, they called it Mecca, naming it after the place where they came from, which would have been, as Thomas Arzruni tells us, the place where Muhammad was born was known as. Mecca, and that's where he revealed himself. So we have all of these names that that are not a problem for Islamic history, because we have Umkura, the mother of, of villages, 
and uh, the mother of settlements. We have um, Arabia Patria, so um, we have the blessed city, we have the, the noble city, and so forth. So we have these names that Petra was known by, and we look in Islamic history, and we find the parallels that they call the very city of Mecca is known as Um Kura. And so where did that come from? How did it get that name? We go to Petra and find out, yes, the city there was also known, but in Greek language, and it means the very same thing. So these names do parallel one another. And finally, we have a reference where somebody says, yeah, and Petra was known as Mecca at one time. Wonderful, wonderful. I think you did an excellent job for us, uh, Dan. Uh, very exciting information, of course. And people. And there's a paper written on this, so you can go to my website and you can look it up, and hopefully we'll get that paper published in a journal as well. So. And uh, what's the name of your website, by the way, for people to know? It's nabatea.net, and we'll put that up. Every second letter is an A, N-A-B-A-T-A-E-A dot -A -A net. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much, brother. And I hope everyone is enjoying uh, this uh, series. And uh, you probably uh, have heard some of these arguments in the past. Maybe you've heard it from Jay Smith. Maybe you've heard it from uh, Dan directly. But uh, if you didn't, hopefully you find these uh, arguments that we're unpacking here to be helpful to you. Uh, you probably have shared some of because I'm, I know a lot of people right now are starting to use these arguments to share it with Muslims to help them uh, recognize that their foundation is based on uh, you know, basically narratives that are not substantiated. Uh, so if a Muslim responds to you, hopefully you'll find these tools helpful for you to reason with them and to help them uh, basically reconsider their emotional side of arguments and begin to look into the data. With that in mind, brother, thank you so much. Of course, we will continue with these objections as we keep building up this particular series uh, and uh, we keep adding more and more of those uh, objections that are, uh, you know, practical, that have been raised, and we want to uh, make sure people can come to these series and deal with them one objection at a time. Last word, brother. Thank you. No, All right. That was good. Wonderful. Thank you, everyone. This is Al-Fadi over and out. God bless. Take care. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel, Sierra International, and click on the bell so that you receive notifications whenever we publish a new video or go live. I would also like to appeal to you to consider becoming a Patreon patron by clicking the link right below. By doing so, you can give towards the production of these videos. There are also other options for you where you can give to our channel. I thank you from the bottom of my heart.